evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inget Zoom Serious Talk. Today, our guest is Gusum Shugan Bash. Gusum Mujam has been an English teacher for 17 years and has gone through many adventures with children. She's a graduate of the ELT department of Gazi University and a very loyal member of Ingen. Mm -hmm. She has had many workshops as a teacher trainer for the British Council and for many publishing companies in ELT conferences. She's currently working at Gidishan Private Schools in Izmir. And I can proudly say that she was a former student of mine and a dear <laughs> colleague right now. And I'm so proud of uh, all the things that uh, she has done uh, because I have had the chance of seeing how wonderfully she works with children. This evening, the title of her talk is Let's Have Some Strict Fun <laughs> in the Classroom. Thank you, dear Gustavo Cham, for being with us. <laughs> what a lovely feeling to have you here. And welcome again. The screen is all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Hajam. Uh, you, you say it's a wonderful feeling, but it's indescribable for me to, to say how proud I am. Because like you said, I have been your teacher and now I'm here as a colleague. Uh, it's it's amazing. I still I still have uh, jitters, but I'm hoping they will go away once I get to the my slides. So uh, let's start. Good evening, everybody. I would uh, I would really like to formally also thank Inged and Aydonajam uh, for giving me such an opportunity to be uh, an amazing uh, to be a part of this amazing event. Uh, I think events like these, uh, like the Inged Zoom series and uh, many more online opportunities are the only positive outcomes of the pandemic. And um, I would also like to say a happy belated, happy Teacher's Day to you all. Uh, this year was extra special for me uh, because there was about two weeks until the 24th when I was asked uh, if I could present tonight. Uh, so I guess you could say I got a very special present very early this year for Teacher's Day. Thank you so much again, Hojam. Uh, just like uh, I don't know, has said, I am a graduate of a uh, very proud graduate of Gazi University. Uh, when I first uh, started uh, Gazi, everyone said, uh, Gazi, if you're if you're graduating from Gazi, you're going to be a great teacher. So teaching is in the DNA, but Gazi also uh, lets you have that <laughs> in you as well. So let's get started. Uh, before I actually start any workshop um, I uh, or a session that I do, I make sure that the participants understand I'm not here because I know more than you and I'm not here because I'm a better teacher than you. Um, I'm just a teacher who is crazy enough to agree to stand or in this case uh, to appear in front of other professionals uh, who uh, and I'm just here to share some of my ideas. Um, we will try to have an interactive session, but uh, like Aydala Jam has said, uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything, I'll try to answer them at the end. I can't find my mouse, but here I found it. <laughs> so the aims of the session, let's have a look at what we are going to uh, be talking about tonight. It is to, first of all, to explore the steps of bringing a new activity to a classroom full of young learners. Uh, I've been working with young learners for most of my uh, career, and uh, they're, they're fun, yes, uh, but they're a little bit hard work as well. Uh, next, we will go through uh, some classroom management techniques that I find helpful. Uh, we will try to understand students' perspectives. And uh, finally, I will share some different activity ideas with you instead of uh, our normal routine uh, activity. Uh, let's continue uh, with a little warm-up activity for this session. Uh, I have got a few questions that I would like to ask you because just like young learners, we also need some warm-up or some sort of introduction uh, into the topic. So if you were in, in an uh, actual classroom, this interaction would have been so much easier, but we have to adapt to technology and the new age. Uh, I think we can use the chat bar uh, when the question appears on the screen, just like this one. Why do you put sugar in cake? Could you please write the first thing that comes to your mind in the chat box? And uh, we will try to interact like that. To make it sweet, I don't know, John says. 
if there are any other answers, what else could it be? Just the first thing that pops, pops to your mind, why do you put sugar in a cake? To torture a diabetic like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a good answer. Because it is inevitable ingredient of the cake. Okay, that's good. To get more calories. Yes, Hojam, always. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go on to our next question. Why do you get on a bus? To make it fluffy and sweet. Charlo Hojam, yes, you know how to do cake. <laughs> Why do you get on a bus? What is the first thing that comes to your mind to go somewhere? Yes. Because we are broke. Ah, uh, you don't have a Tesla, Ali Hojam? Wow. <laughs> That's all we driving, isn't it? <laughs> because we are broke. Sightseeing. Ah, oh, see, that's nice. Yes, we do go on buses, especially the London buses that are on the screen, right? For sightseeing. For to commute more economically, to reduce the traffic. Wow, environmentalist, Hojam, yes. I'm just a poor officer. We all are. <laughs> Hello, Hojam, we all are. Thank you so much again for your answers. My next question is, why do you take photos? Why do people take photos? To create memories, yes, to immortalize the moment. <laughs> to keep the moment, to remember the moment, yes, that's right. We do do that, so we take photos to remember the moment, to record memories, thank you very much. And uh, last before last, why do you wear socks? It's cold outside the <laughs> job. But why do you wear them inside then? <laughs> this uncle. Oh. <laughs> In the party. Oh, to be stylish. Wow. To keep our feet warm. Logical answers. Yes, to keep warm. Okay. We, we just wait for one more. To be more comfy in my shoes. Wonderful. Very different perspectives, like, like views, right? Very different views. Okay, last question, guys. Why do you go to school? Ask a teacher this question. <laughs> to learn, to have some strict fun, yes. <laughs> to socialize, oh, that's nice. To have a chat with my students, to be educated. To learn, okay, with our friends. Oh, my second home. <laughs> to learn many things, Ilkay Hijram says. To play football. <laughs> that's that's your son's answer. Yes, exactly. Which brings us to our point, actually. So thank you so much to ensure order and discipline. Oh my god. <laughs> I love John. <laughs> So thank you all for your answers, guys. Generally, you have answered. Let's have a look at our answers again. To uh, like, why do we put sugar in cakes to make it sweet? We get on the bus to go somewhere. We take photos to remember memories. We wear socks to keep warm. These were our general answers. Now, these are all answers that the students, especially young learners, can give. And they can relate and understand because they have baked cakes before with their parents. And they have experienced that salt tastes what what they what it tastes like, and that they are know and understand it shouldn't go in cake. They have taken a bus before to go from point A to point B, and know and understand why they need to get on the bus. They have seen photos from the time they were a baby, and they understand to make a moment last forever. You need to take photos. However, the last question is a bit tricky for them because we have given answers like, and I'm sure you will get these answers from your students as well. We go to school to learn. We go to have a good education because when we grow up, we want to work. We want to have a good job because we want to earn enough money to buy nice things. <laughs> and they will give you these answers because they have been taught well by the society, but these are not things that they are that are relative to them. They can't relate, they can't understand the concept of having a good job and being comfortable, 
because it's not something that they have to strive for in their daily life at that age. Even if they see examples of good uh, people, of people having good jobs who have become somewhere and are successful, they still don't understand how or why. I have personally never come across a young learner who does something today as an investment for their future, because right now all they can relate to is what's happening today or playing football. <laughs> Um, they don't yet have the ability to worry about the future, which brings us to the first step of bringing a new activity into the classroom. And that is explain why. So to explain why we're doing an activity in class and to give them a reason that they can relate to. Let's say you want to do a speaking activity with the kids. Instead of giving them a dialogue that says student A, student B, and have them come up in front of the classroom and say, okay, let's practice speaking. Give them a reason that they can relate to for speaking. For example, you want to practice future tense, will and want sentence structures and question structures. You have given the necessary tools in previous lessons, and now you feel that students can come up with positive and negative sentences and questions using will and want. And now it's a production and practice time. So instead of a dialogue that is already written in the course book, why not turn the kids into fortune tellers? Now, of course, I'm not saying kids can relate to fortune tellers because they have been to the cafes in Kizilai to learn about their future prospects, but they do understand from the cartoons they watch what a fortune teller does. So walk into the classroom and put on are you ready for this? I'm not. And put on a wig. This is my fortune teller wig. And tell them you are there to train them as little fortune tellers. I can't even see my stuff, so I have no idea what I look like. <laughs> Give them a reason for asking questions like, what will happen next Saturday? Or making a sentence like, you will have very good luck for the next five years. Of course, you have got a wig on or any kind of prop that will make your students go catch you. <laughs> you will walk into the classroom with your basket, something like this, any or, or any, any box, and you carry out your routine of starting your lesson, saying good morning, good afternoon, ask the class leader if there's anybody absent, and then you make your way to the teacher's desk and you put the box down and you come up in front of the classroom. Now at this point, of course, the kids are laughing and trying to ask you what's going on. And you might have created a little bit of a chaos because there will always be one or two students who are overreacting and are encouraging others to overreact too. But because you're strict and persistent, in carrying out your normal greeting routine, and because you stand there smiling, gesturing, that they should settle down so you can start, the things will soon calm down, and because they want to know what will happen next. What is this crazy woman going to do next? So you can either, at this point, continue by a little chit chat, asking, do you like my hair? What do you think I am? What do you think will happen this lesson? Or you can get into a different character and say, your teacher, Ms. Shivgan, couldn't be here today. So I came to do a lesson with you. And my name is Miss Fortuna. I'm a fortune teller. And then you can say, is there anyone who would like to ask me a question about their future? <laughs> there are very few students who will not put up their hand for something like this. And that is only because they are either a little too shy or not fully comfortable with making questions yet. So it would be a good idea to write down a few of the first questions on the board so that those students can have a visual aid and to help them make questions. So you get your first student putting his or hand up to ask a question, but of course, as a fortune teller, you need a magic glow. Ta -da! <laughs> now, because it's too risky, to bring something glass into the classroom, you can make your own fortune teller from paper. Let's go on to my next slide. 
Have you ever seen these little things? In Turkish, they're called tuzluk, but they're actually called fortune tellers in English. Now, if your students are old enough, like third or fourth grade, they will already know how to make these little crafts. Now, you are back in the classroom. You have your students putting their hand up to ask questions. You take a question and you ask the students to give you a color. I have prepared a little fortune teller here as well. So we have got colors on the outside and some sentences on the inside. Um, where was I? After a few turns, you can move towards your final goal. So you're asking your students, okay, um, uh, <laughs> okay, so what is my fortune? They will ask, what will I do next Saturday? You ask them to give you a color and give you a number and you do your thing. And being the teacher you are, of course, you can make up um, uh, answers right there on the spot. After a few turns, you can now move towards your main goal, which is for the students to be fortune tellers and to speak to each other. And of course, each student will need to have their own paper fortune tellers. So the next step is to give out some paper and instructions on how to fold one. Just to give you a little reminder, we are still within our first step, which is to give a reason for the kids to do something. Now they're folding fortune tellers so that they can tell the fortune and this is our reason. Now at this point, you can either demonstrate step-by-step step how to fold one of these, but there will be some students who are going to fall behind. So instead of doing step-by-step, step, you can either put on a video that shows how to do it, or if you think it will be easier, you can put on a diagram with the steps. So each follow can, each student can follow at their own pace. Once the folding is finished, which it should ideally take about five minutes, you need to guide the students because we don't want them to just write down anything that they can think of on, inside, on the inside of the fortune teller. You can either give them categories. Let's go on to our next slide. You can say, choose a category. It can be activities, animals, toys, and examples of the questions that can be asked. So what will I do next? Which animal will I be? Which toy will my parents buy me? And according to the level of your students, you can give simpler or more complex instructions and have different versions of the fortune tellers, like these ones. This one has got some sentences inside, actually some activities, which the students will then turn into sentences. Or if you're a little bit lower on the stage, you can have asked them to just write one word and draw a picture. This is probably about what will I be when I grow up? Will I be a hunter? Will I be an astronaut? Will I be an elf, really? <laughs> or you can go simpler. You can just ask them to write down numbers and the questions that the students will ask will just be numbers uh, for answers. Like for example, um, how many cats will I have when I grow up? Like, I want to be a crazy cat lady. <laughs> so if we don't give them a reason, this is uh, what will probably happen in the classroom. Like Professor Herman paused when he heard that unmistakable thud, another brain had imploded. If the students don't have a reason, they don't know why they're doing something. It's just going to be, you know, going overboard a little bit. So now that the first step is covered, let's go on to our next slide. We gave the students a reason. We can move on to step two, which is to get students to be all curious about what will happen next. And one of the best ways to do that is to offer information about themselves. How many times have you come across these little games or questionnaires like these on social media and you couldn't stop yourself from taking part in them? Like what color is your soul? Really? The app is going to tell you that? <laughs> or what is your IQ level? Seriously? <laughs> or how many people like you? But you care because you want to know something about yourself. So the saying that curiosity kills a cat is not true anymore because marketing strategies have discovered that curiosity is the cat itself. That's how they lure you in. <laughs> now on my next slide, what did we do? If the students or anyone for that matter think that they will learn something about themselves, 
they are automatically more invested and more interested in doing something. So get their attention by offering personal information. Now, coming back to the activity, we have our fortune tellers ready. We get the students in pairs and we get them to ask each other questions. I have my fortune teller here. And before I can take off my beautiful wig, <laughs> is there anyone who would like to find out what they will be doing this weekend? So again, in the chat box, could you please write the question, what will I do this weekend? And then straight after that, write down a color between pink, yellow, green, red, and then write a number between one and 10. I've got my eye on the chat. The first person who makes it grammatically correct. <laughs> what will I do this weekend? Blue four, I don't know, John, are you ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> you will mark exams and homework. <laughs> Inevitable. Okay, Furkan Hojam has said, hold on, no, before Furkan Hojam, we have I saw the jump. I saw the jump has said, what will I do next this weekend? Green five. So green, one, two, three, four, five. You will learn how to cook something new, Hojam. <laughs> Let's see the next question. Furkan Ajan, what will I do this weekend? Pink eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Furkan Ajan, you will see one of your students in the park. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no job. What will I do this weekend? Red seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You will buy shoes from a 50% sale, Ojam. Run, run. 50% sale, I should have written, I should have written 75%. Okay, one more. Uh, I said, Ojam, what will I do this weekend? Red six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, you will go shopping with your best friend, Ojam. <laughs> Equally, Ojam, we don't have purple, but we have pink. So let's have a look. Uh, pink, uh, uh, pink two, one, two. Ikoyajam, you have, you will see one of your students in the park. That's the curse of being a teacher, isn't it? What will I do this weekend? Azra, hi. <laughs> what will I do this weekend? Red eight, she has said. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hojam, you will go to a huge party. <laughs> Someone does get to drink after all. <laughs> All right, last one, Yaran Hojam, you said, what will I do this weekend? And again, you went for pink three, one, two, three. Hojam, you will win something in a raffle. Go to an ELT workshop or something. <laughs> You're going to win something in a raffle. Okay, I think it's time to take off the ring. <laughs> the students don't like it, of course. We always do that at the end of the lesson. So moving on, that is how we use our fortune tellers. But of course, um, coming back to the lesson plan, uh, we have, what did we do? We did two minutes uh, greeting time uh, for students to settle down and then another three minutes to explain what's going on with the hair and the wig. Uh, next, we spent about 10 minutes reading fortunes and writing down some of the questions on the board. Uh, then we gave another five minutes to make their own fortune tellers. So now we have about 20 minutes left for practice. Of course, ideally, it all sounds good, like a wonderful lesson plan time-wise, but we really need to know and cater for the students because there is a big possibility that we will end up like this. So the teacher says in the staff room, I like to use puppets with my young learners. I find that it allows them to express themselves in ways which they'd otherwise be too shy or self-conscious for. And then in the classroom, this happens. <laughs> now, if your group of students need more time, you can spend, you can spread the lesson plan and plan this activity for two lessons. So the first lesson would be just to make this. And then in the second lesson, you can bring in the fortune teller. Each classroom and each group, they have got different dynamics. 
So you really need to think it through individually for each class or level grade. But one thing uh, will of course be common, which is to set the rules as you go along with the activity. Now, notice that I said we need to set the rules as we go along because students, especially young learners, they need steps. If you try to give the rules and instructions all at the same time, one after the another, then we will end up like Mrs. Mutner over here. It says Mrs. Mutner liked to go over a few of her rules on the first day of school. So no talking, no running, no kicking, no biting, no laughing, no smiling. It's all too much for the kids. You can see their eyes like, what? What's happening? Where are we? <laughs> so we don't want the students to be lost in the rules and we give them out step by step. Now, for young learners, when I say rules, I mostly mean classroom management because the steps or the instructions of the activity are very clear and that's a different thing. But controlling how the activity goes is the part where we require the rules. If you don't want to end up like this beautiful lady here, and I hope you'll be able to hear it. We have gone through this stage somewhere in our teaching. Everyone has, I guess. Let's go on to our next slide. So. This is one of the attention getters that I really like using. And this is one of the classroom management techniques that I want to share with you. So instead of shouting, no one's listening, listen, there are some catchphrases that I, uh, I use. Uh, this is my favorite one. I say macaroni and cheese, and the students say, everybody freeze. And they actually have to freeze on the stop. So no talking, no moving, just freeze, which allows you to either warn somebody uh, about not following the steps or for not speaking English during the activity or to add another step to your instruction. Next one is uh, where I say hocus pocus and the students say everybody focus and they do their goggles with their hands and they try to find what you're going to show them. This is really good for when you want them to focus on something. Next one we have is I say hands on top and the students say that means stop and they put their hands on their heads. This is more effective when they're doing writing activities and you just want them to stop writing for a second and do it. The reason why we have this like a double way I say something and then they say something because again if I just say hands on top that means stop they're not going to uh, recognize it but if they say it themselves it's more effective. And last one is, so instead of asking, is everyone finished? Are you all done? I say all set and the students say, you bet. And they give a thumbs up. So it's interactive, it's physical, everything all in one. <laughs> so from the beginning, let's do the steps again. We bring in new, a new activity. We explained why we're doing this by giving the students a reason. Then we got their attention by personalizing the activity. Uh, we have set our rules and did a few tricks for classroom management. And the next step is to be consistent with them. Now, this is where the strictness comes in. Because, of course, by strict, we don't mean yell and shout at the students, like raise an eyebrow. These little tricks work best because, you, um, because the students are already familiar with how you handle the class. Uh, when they are more likely to focus and enjoy the new activity, if you bring these in before, before the activity. So actually the consistency part, it starts at the very beginning and then it goes like that. So it's a good idea to set the rules and introduce the tricks over a new a, a period of time, say that's at the beginning of the year and while you're getting to know your students and then bring in the new activity. Won't move. Why won't you move? So, if everything goes according to plan, the last step will be to enjoy teaching while the kids enjoy learning. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say this is as easy as it sounds because it's not. And like this cute little panda says, I wish everything was as easy as getting fat. They did a little phonics trick there as well. 
but nothing is nothing is easy as getting fat now getting used to a routine and changing things always take time but please don't give up on something when you have just tried it once and it didn't work out you should try again and again adding to the experience you have gotten from your previous tries um, just to visualize this, I want to show you what would have happened if I had given up and used the first photo I took for this session. So here you go. See, this was my first try. If I had given up, this would have been not the photo that you saw on the poster for tonight's session. But I didn't give up. I tried again. <laughs> and again. My eyes closed. No, no. So you just have to try and keep going. And of course, don't forget to have fun along the way. And at the end, you will have perfection. Not that I'm calling this photo a perfect photo, but it's usable. It can go on an inget poster, you know? <laughs> now, if we have time, and I think we do, uh, we have got some more activities that I want to share with you. Just ideas, uh, like I'm not going to go too much into detail like the fortune teller, but if you uh, if you want to ask anything or if you want to plan the activity together, you can always contact me and ask. So we're going to take a classic back to school activity and turn it into a fun one just by following the steps that we have just gone through. Because otherwise, students will start coming up with their own ideas like this little smart one. Are you sure you can't just follow me on Facebook to know what I did all summer? Really? <laughs> Do I really have to report on this? <laughs> Do I really have to write it? <laughs> so let's turn this classic activity. Uh, I'm just going to move my uh, video screen here at the bottom. OK. so. The first thing we want to do is we actually don't want to, them, them to write just a report so we can read it, but we want them to write it so we to, to find out who had the best summer. Now we're going to tell the students that we are doing a survey to find out which class had the best summer. Next. There we go. So ask students to write about their summer, which will be rated by their friends. Take one classroom's paragraphs to the other. Give students stickers that say super duper great or good. Ask students to read about their friend's summer and rate it. And then finally, do a board out in the hall where everyone can see with bar charts that show how many people got which rate. And so which class had the best summer. So we have given them a reason. We have gotten their attention by giving personal information like who had the best summer. So they're all curious and they want to do this activity. Now, another classic activity is for students to describe their families. <laughs> so instead, we are going to say, let's try and find out how cool is your family. Now the steps are to create a pool of adjectives with students, which can which they can use to describe for uh, to describe each family member, and then we will tell them that each word has got a point, which will be revealed once everybody finishes the paragraphs. For example, the word adventurous will be five points. The word good is two points, and then we will ask students to write about each family member uh, and their physical experience appearance. Uh, jobs or character. And when it's all finished, we will reveal the points for words and ask them to add up their points. So this is just like taking one of those personality quizzes in the magazines. And finally, we will ask and find out who got the most points in class, meaning who has got the coolest family. Again, instead of just, you know, writing, yay, about my family, I'm writing. Now, uh, when that time for the year comes that we are teaching likes and dislikes, instead of getting students to write a paragraph, we can ask them to find out what their spirit animal is. Now, what is your spirit animal? That's the activity name. We have given them a reason. They want to find out about something, something about themselves. First, we're going to brainstorm some activities children like and don't like to create a pool of ideas. And then we will ask students to write about at least five activities they like and five activities they don't like. 
when everybody's finished their paragraphs, reveal all the activities are organized under four categories, which are earth, fire, earth, and water. And then we will ask students to look at the categories and find out how many activities they wrote from each category. So if most of their activities are from earth category, then their spirit animal is a horse. If most of the activities are from the air category, they're an eagle. If the most, of, if most of the activities are from the fire category, they're a dragon. And if it's water, they're a whale. So I really hope you have enjoyed this session, guys. Uh, and I would like to say thank you one more time to Inget and to Idolojam for having me. I hope I haven't gone over time. I have no idea what time it is right now. <laughs> You did an excellent job. Time management was great. We still have uh, time, in fact, and uh, we can talk about, uh, in fact, the suggestions that you made. By the way, I loved those phrases that you used uh, for uh, the, uh, the the react to get reactions yeah. from the students. I love them. Oh my God. <laughs> Nice. What brilliant <laughs> phrases that you have <laughs> used. Thank you. Um, if, guys, if you have written down Gusum Hoja's uh, email address, mm -hmm. we can maybe ask her to uh, stop sharing yes. the screen so that we can see I each so other. I can see everybody finally. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or remarks that you would like to share, please use the uh, chat box. Uh, while waiting, uh, I will definitely uh, make a comment here. Uh, Gülsüm Hocam has used two activities that really, uh, that, that, that are very common that we use in the classroom. One is, how did you spend your summer holiday? Now, we know that our students do not have very exciting lives. So most probably they do not do much during their summer holiday. They either, you know, watch television or play with their friends or, you know, just be lazy during the summer. So uh, what you can do, uh, because they're not going to end up with a, a highly uh, <laughs> impressive paragraphs. So what you can do is you can uh, maybe brainstorm first. Mm -hmm. Come up with some crazy ideas. Uh, for example, uh, did you do uh, bungee jumping? Did you go uh, abroad? Mm -hmm. You know, things that are not very likely. That will give them uh, a, a chance to say, well, I didn't do bungee jumping but I did swimming <laughs> you know at least they will have longer paragraphs and they will also have a chance to use the negative forms as well exactly for, for, for this year actually Hojam uh, I'm not sure if I can find a powerpoint right now but I did make a powerpoint that said I want you to say, uh, write one sentence, something that you did and something you, that you definitely didn't do. Yeah. And I said, go as crazy as you can. And of the course. example that I gave was, I didn't ride a unicorn on Mars. So <laughs> there, was, there was a whole- That's a wonderful of, one. <laughs> yes, whole visual, visualization with my Bitmoji, riding a pony, uh, riding a unicorn on Mars. And I didn't do it. So- it was more fun for the students, like you said, Ojan. Of course, to give of a course. pool of ideas or say, just go crazy. Imagine, imagine the kind of a summer that you would want to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, of course, you work uh, at a private school, and definitely your uh, students' parents, their families, come from a certain uh, social, socioeconomic background. So Ali Hojam says, for example, uh, he asked in the classroom how often uh, do uh, they go to the cinema and they say once a year. Uh, well, that is true. But as the teacher, you will know your students' profiles. So you will choose your activities accordingly. Of course, these are just ideas, suggestions. 
So you don't have to use these, you can adapt them. You know, you can, uh, knowing your students and what kind of a background they come from, what kind of families they have, you can change the activity, you can change the alternatives. And the Georgia, unfortunately, practicum is very much like cooking in someone else's kitchen. So it's so hard because that kitchen has its own rules. And as an outsider, you are trying to bring something new uh, there. So believe me, being the teacher of a group has lots of advantages. Yes, Aloja? Hojam, I'm not exaggerating. It's like you are, you are Real Madrid. You are uh, used to play in the Champions League, but you have to play in uh, regional amateur league. For me, unfortunately, that's the thing. I I do I, I hear you. <laughs> of course, that is very that is very frustrating. Uh, like uh, some months ago, I was doing a session with uh, private school teachers, and I was using. Uh, a super hero, Superman. I was using Superman <laughs> to teach. Uh, he flies, he runs fast, you know, because he wears this, you know. Yeah. And my assumption was all the students know Superman. Uh, well, of course, these are private school teachers, so they all said, yeah, of course, our students know Superman, but one of them said, well, we are lucky, but if we're teaching, if we were teaching uh, a group of people in a different city or in a village, then there is the possibility of not knowing that character. True. But again, I'm repeating, when you teach you know your students, so you change your activities accordingly. And I think the same goes for the family uh, because not everyone can have a cool family, especially if you're teaching in a very poor district area. Um, most of their mothers don't work, they're housewives, and most of the time their fathers have... Um, jobs that are not that fascinating they're just regular jobs you know just maybe a um, construction worker for example so uh, if you have such a situation of course you can easily change that activity into something mm -hmm. else right <laughs> But in that activity, yeah. Hojam, they are they are, they're getting points for the words that they are using to describe. So, of course, he of course his his dad or her dad could be a construction worker. But the uh, like if they say he's an adventurous construction worker, then they yeah. get the point. It's yes. so there's a so brave so maybe. Yes, for a example, brave a brave construction, construction worker. <laughs> exactly. uh, Yaren Hojam, uh, I know I love that fortune teller activity uh, as i've said in the chat box i have a video on that on our inget turkey youtube channel mm -hmm. you can also watch that because i also give the steps of making uh, that fortune teller it is a wonderful activity even yeah. with the distance learning yeah it works because they can easily like gusumoja did with us they can easily give the uh, color and the number Right. Uh, so I cannot I'm still talking because I'm uh, waiting for the people to come up with uh, Question. questions or comments. Well, thank you very much for joining uh, the session. People are thanking in the chat box. That's why I'm thanking back them. Uh, uh, which age group do you usually work with? Uh, for the past five, six years, Ojam is fourth grade, so nine, fourth nine, grade. ten year olds. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, fourth fourth but, grade in in uh, in private schools is a very uh, difficult uh, year to work with because they have just come out of the um, uh, of the class teacher, so they just had one teacher for all the uh, lessons okay. except for the other branches like uh, uh -huh. English, PE. So, uh, but in fourth grade, everything is branched out. So uh, uh -huh. at mm -hmm. one point. Uh, their their nine year old in the classroom teacher safety net, mm. and then they branch out to ten teachers at the same time. So it's more like a training year for fifth grade. Yeah. So so it's it's quite a hard it's quite a hard year to handle. And uh, when you have become like a um, second or third year um, uh, experience, they want to keep you there. And 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 I like it. I like getting that experience and using yeah. that all the time. So do you accept? Uh, students do you admit students from other schools uh, at the fourth grade yes yes okay do. so you sometimes end up with students coming from a different background mm -hmm. yes that's right uh, I know it is going to take time but very briefly uh, can you give us a, 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 a you know a, an idea about how to help these students to mm -hmm. catch up with the others mm -hmm. so, what do uh, you what, do yeah so so what we do is uh, we have a, a, a an application that we used called the teacher time or or meeting with the teacher so mm -hmm. when when the new student comes in of course the kids that have been in the school have been learning english since kindergarten and they're quite fluent uh, but this this student feels very uh, shy and doesn't timid. want to do anything mm. and very, very timid because they don't know any English. Uh, they have never mm. had English lessons mm. before. So we have this time with the students to, to talk about their likes and dislikes. We say, you're going to have a meeting with me in our school cafe. We're going to have some hot chocolate. Mm. Mm. And uh, can you please bring whatever you're interested in because I want to know more about you. Mm. So we create that connection and we speak Turkish there. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, in the whole school, we don't speak Turkish at all with the kids. But during that meeting time, we speak Turkish, we make that connection. And mm -hmm. then by the end of the meeting, we say, listen, um, I'm, in, I'm an English teacher and I'm going to speak in, keep speaking English with you in the corridors mm -hmm. or in the lesson. But if mm -hmm. there's something you don't understand and you really struggle, give us a signal. Just give me a signal and I will come to you and you can whisper it in my ear. Mm -hmm. And we also make sure the student understands the reason why we are, we, we are so persistent on speaking English is for them to improve. Mm -hmm. Like I remember very uh, vividly, like about six years ago, the student, uh, she, she, ran, she went running out of my classroom. So I said to the kids, stay here, <laughs> running after her in the corridor. I said, Dana, what happened? She said, I don't understand anything you're saying. I don't mm -hmm. understand. So after that meeting, we had the connection and I said, you know, we have a little signal. If you want, I can help you. I'll still keep keep speaking English with you. But if you want, you can say something Turkish to me and I'll try to help. By the end of the year, Hojam, uh, it was like she was always there with us since kindergarten. It, it helped her so much. It encouraged her so much that she really did want to put the work in. And it yeah. was like... Yeah. She, she was not a newcomer at all. Yeah. And then in yeah. fifth grade, she joined my drama club. <laughs> and in the drama club, she had one of the leading roles. Whoa. So, I was in tears. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do have these kinds of things. Like if you want to say something, uh, come to me. I'll try to help you. Okay. So you create that uh, safe atmosphere yes. for them. Yes. So they, they can easily uh lean on you if they need help yeah. you will be there to help them okay yeah. that's a wonderful that must be a wonderful feeling because otherwise it can be a frustrating experience for a a child imagine not being able to understand even a word in the classroom yes. well not, thank not you even, very not much even just for a child Dujan, I, I i had to yeah. sit in one of the italian lessons one day mm -hmm. <laughs> because i was marking or doing something uh, okay said, okay if i just sit here and you know do my uh, book filling or whatever they just said yeah, yeah of course and i was like huh <laughs> what's <laughs> happening here <laughs> well you don't understand anything and that that is where the empathy comes in 
Yes. We, we also have in our school, we have got some exchange students uh, from different countries where mm. their, their, their parents have come to work. Uh, mm. in our uh, uh, military forces or th such things. Mm. And those kids, they remind me so much of the time when I went to England and I didn't know any English. Mm. So they, they know English, they can communicate with me, but they have they have no Turkish. So in the yeah. Turkish lessons, in the math lessons, in the science lessons, they're lost. And I was just tearing myself up. I was like, I have yeah. to help these kids. I have to do something. Yeah. You relate so much to them. So if yeah. really, if you don't, if you want to understand what a student who doesn't know any English goes through, go and sit in an Italian class yes. or Spanish class, yes. that will help. Definitely. Just to recall our experience, because we have all gone through the same steps, you know, when we were learning, uh, we are still learning. Uh, but if we fail to recall those days, Maybe we should go and listen to an Italian talking or uh, Spanish. I don't I don't speak Spanish, so that would or Arabic that would make the same effect on me. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but uh, what I'm gonna say just to uh, wrap it up, uh, all the things that you have mentioned here does not only work with young learners, it works with all age groups. I can't imagine even an adult not liking to have fun. Yeah. Everyone loves having fun. Even we had uh, fun here, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can um, uh, laugh together. We don't need to laugh at each other. And that <laughs> will create a very friendly atmosphere. So, uh How many Ingat sessions? <laughs> oh, well, this is the 109th, I believe, this yeah. session. Yeah. We have started when pandemic uh, started. Uh, but of course, we do not have any sessions on special days. Uh, it can be a national holiday. It can be a religious holiday. It can be, uh, for example, the uh, commemoration of Atatürk or Teacher's Day uh, because <clears throat> we know that there are certain other ceremonies that are being held. So, uh, has been uh, two years now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Ali Ojam, you have been with us since the beginning, right? Ojam, as far as sessions. I remember, it's uh, since November 2020. Yes. Three years. Wow. Three years now. <laughs> well, John, I have a confession to make. I always had to watch them from the YouTube channel because it's exactly on the time when my son goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know. But when like, you have little kids. For, for today, I said, go to grandma, go to grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so they're at their house right now. <laughs> well, I do understand uh, my colleagues who cannot join the live session. Uh, they, of course, prefer to uh, watch it. I can easily see uh the uh, number of the viewers mm -hmm. and we had a huge we have a huge number uh yeah. there so i know that people are watching the videos uh i prefer it live because then it's you can be involved you can be actively involved in it rather than watching it pass passively later uh but uh, definitely uh all the things that you have mentioned here, the cubes that you have put together, I think they all work for every age group. Yeah, yeah. So, you so <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a million for giving us this wonderful, fun session. We had Thank great you. time on Friday uh, and we didn't spend any money, see? Yes. We stayed home <laughs> and had fun. <laughs> but don't forget, Hojam, your fortune is to mark homeworks and exams. I, I know, I know. I hate that. I hate that, Gusum Hojam. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone had something nice. They they went shopping. They had uh, something nice doing. And I ended up marking homework. 
Thank you very much, Goose. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> destiny, <hold on. laughs> We are in charge of our destiny. Next week, Asana is going to take you out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, as always, I have to thank uh, the participants here because you make everything better. Yeah. More fun, more beautiful. Without you, these sessions would be very dull, believe me. And I want to thank you all, first, of course, Gusumo Jam and all participants uh, for being here. And next week, we will be together with a very outstanding uh, speaker with a wonderful session. So hope to see you. Gusumo Jam, do you want to say bye? Thank you so much, Ajam. This has been such a peak point of my career. I mean, like you said at the beginning as well, I was your student, Daphne Hojam here. I've, I've worked with you so for so long. And uh, being at this point, it makes me so proud. Uh, it, 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 we, I can't put it in words. So just so just thank you so much for everything, Ajam. Thank you. It has been, uh, uh, we have felt so proud, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's, bye -bye. It makes me proud to, to, to know that you are proud. <laughs> ah, cute. Bye-bye, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. Stay safe and hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye.